Hello and welcome to Legal Wrangle, India's first video headnote from TIOL Tube. A big thank you to all our viewers for your valuable comments. We have followed your suggestion and split Legal Wrangle into direct tax and indirect tax. Today's episode of Legal Wrangle brings you four important indirect tax decisions relating to VAT, Central Excise and Service Tax. In our first case on VAT, Infosys Technologies claim that a workstation is a computer accessory and not furniture as understood in common parlance. The issue is whether the nomenclature given to an article by revenue is decisive to determine the tax liability or the eligibility for input tax credit. Let's go to Manith for the facts of the case. Thanks, Asha. The Assessi Infosys is engaged in the business of development and sale of computer software. During the assessment, VAT authorities found that the Assessi had claimed input tax under the nomenclature of workstations. The revenue disallowed such input tax on workstations, considering them as input tax restricted on goods falling under entry number 5 of the Schedule 5 Red Bit Section 11A of the Karnataka Value Added Tax. Thank you, Manith. After losing at the first appellate stage, Infosys Technologies won the case before the tribunal, which held that workstations are accessories of technical goods such as computer. The revenue appeal before the High Court. The High Court held that the word furniture is not defined under the Act. So, its meaning in common or commercial parlance has to be adopted. The Karnataka High Court hence ruled that it was not possible to accept the revenue's view that a cubicle or a workstation would fall within the meaning of the word furniture. The assessee was thus entitled to the benefit of input tax paid for acquiring such workstations. Yes, who would have thought workstations are not mere tables or furniture? Our next case is inspired by the cricket fever gripping the country. The assessee is Jaipur IPL Cricket Private Limited. The assessee before SESTAT is Jaipur IPL Cricket Private Limited. Yes, the key issue in this case was whether the assessee can utilize its NVAT credit for payment of an amount specified in Section 73A Clause 2 of the Finance Act 1994. The facts of the case, Manith? Facts for you, Asha. Jaipur IPL Cricket, the SSE is a franchisee of IPL. It collected huge sponsorship charges from companies in Bangalore and Mumbai for its sponsorship of its cricket team Rajasthan Royals for IPL series. Not realising that sponsorship of sporting event is excluded from the levy of service tax, the assessee wrongly collected service tax from its sponsors, which was remitted to the exchequer by way of debit of Senvat credit. Revenue officials held that the assessee was not entitled to make remittance by way of debit in the Senvat credit account. The assessee accordingly made the remittance of the service tax collected in cash to the exchequer under the provisions of Section 73A. This amount was appropriated and the assessee was directed to pay interest on the delayed payment. A penalty was also imposed under Section 77. The CSTAT upheld the payment made to the exchequer as well as the interest imposed on the delay. The penalty was however deleted. The assessee's appeal was partly allowed. The CSTAT held that the SSC cannot utilize SENVAT credit for discharge of liability under Section 73A2. The department's demand for payment of liability was upheld along with interest for the delay in payment. Well, SSCs need to be careful about wrongful collection of service tax. Our next case is the majority decision of CSTAT in the case of Indian Hotels Company Limited. 
The interesting issue in this case was whether service tax is applicable on the activity of managing the hotel business under a license agreement until completion of the final purchase of the hotel. Is the nature of this activity a management consultancy service which would be liable for service tax? The key issue before the SESTAT was service tax liability of the appealant Indian hotels who had taken over a loss-making hotel and was running the organization under a license agreement until final purchase. The CSTAT members of the division bench had a difference of opinion. The matter was referred to the third member for a majority decision. Let's turn to Manit for the facts of the case. Regent Hotel in Mumbai was incurring losses. It owed crores of rupees to ICICI Trustship Services and others. Indian Hotels Company, the appellant in this case, acquired the business of Regent Hotel. It signed licensed agreement under which ICICI Trustship Services settled the loans of other parties. A new company was formed and named Taj Lands End. Indian Hotels took over the work of running the hotel enjoying 20% of the profit share while 80% went to ICICI Trustship Services. The sharing of profits clause caught the eagle eyes of the revenue officers. The department alleged that the activity undertaken by Indian hotels was classifiable as management consultancy services and service tax was payable on the profits earned by them. A service tax demand was confirmed along with penalties and interest. The third member, however, held in favour of the assessee in the majority decision. Manit? Yes, Asha. The third member concluded that Indian Hotel is running the hotel on its own and was not doing any services for any other entity, therefore not providing consultancy and was not liable to service tax. This decision highlights that providing services to oneself is not liable to service tax. Well, this brings us to our last indirect tax case involving SEAT tires. The SESI is SEAT tires and the case involves Rule 7 of the Central Excise Rules. The key issue is whether interest is payable on the differential excise duty arising on finalization of provisional assessment. Manit will let us have the facts of the case. Here are the facts. Seat Tyres is a manufacturer of tyres, flaps and tubes. It had granted various discounts to its distributors. Unable to precisely determine the value of goods at the time of factory clearance, the assessee had cleared the goods on provisional assessment basis under Rule 7 of Central Excise Rules. On completion of the financial year and account audit, the assessee calculated the correct value of goods. The differential duty was paid without waiting for a formal order by the revenue. In the final order, the revenue levied interest against the assessee on the differential duty for the period until the date of payment. The SESTAT dismissed the assessee's appeal. The Bombay High Court held in favour of the assessee SEAT tyres. While holding in favour of the assessee, the High Court came down heavily on the SESTAT for brushing aside the orders of the High Court in the case of Ispat Industries and Tata Motors, which were binding on it and instead following its larger bench decision by terming the High Court's order as per incurium. The High Court rebuked the CSTAT to be more careful and guarded. The department needs to avoid loose and careless drafting of rules. If they wanted interest from day one, the rules should speak it. Well, thank you for staying with us and hope you enjoyed this episode. Please email us your comments and suggestions at editor at tiol.in. See you again next week on Legal Wrangle for Direct Tax. Have a great weekend ahead and do subscribe to our channel on YouTube.